Hey fellow problem solvers, Colfax Math here. This video is gonna be all about solving for systems of equations. I'm gonna do it three different ways. Uh, linear combinations, substitution, and by graphing. This is chapter 13 in the Foundations of Math course. I'll put all previous chapters as a link in the description. The whole point of this course is to build solid foundational skills so that you can progress in math and be successful on a union math entrance exam, a contractor's exam, or an ASVAB military placement exam in mathematics. So let's go ahead and get started with graphing. The previous chapter, chapter 12, is an intro to graphing. If you haven't watched that video, maybe go back and watch that video. And in here, we're looking at systems of equations. So again, let's start with a few pieces of graphing. There's a horizontal axis called X, a vertical axis called Y. One way to graph is a slope intercept form, which is Y equals MX plus B, where M is your slope, rise over run, the change in vertical over the change in horizontal. B is your Y intercept where it crosses the Y axis. Um, you should have a notebook with you and taking notes in front of you and then doing the problems before I do them. So we're given two equations right here. This one right here is y equals 3x minus 7. Let me go ahead and graph that in red here. So again, this is my slope, m. So it's a fraction 3 over 1. This is my y-intercept, negative 7. So I'm down here at negative 7. From negative 7, I rise 3 and run one. So it's a pretty steep line, looks kind of like that there. Here's my second equation, y equals negative 2x plus 8. Again, this is a fraction, rise over run. It's negative, meaning I'm going to start at 8, I'm going to go down and over. So I'm going to, up on my y-axis, I cross at 8. From 8, I rise negative 2 to negative 6, and I run 1. It puts me about there, so I go like this. And there's my graph there. If I did a really good graph accurately with a ruler on graph paper, I could find that coordinate, that point of intersection uh, graphically. So that's the first way to solve. But I drew it pretty sloppily. So I'm going to do it with substitution next and find out what that ordered pair is. Remember, an ordered pair is an x, y. And in this case, it's going to be this value and this value on the x and y axis where they intersect. So to start with, on substitution, I have y is equal to 3x minus 7, and y is equal to this, negative 2x plus 8. So in substitution, I'm saying y equals this, and I'm going to take this and plug it in for y. So this y right here, I'm replacing with 3x minus 7. That y is equal to negative 2x plus 8. Now I have one equation with one variable, right? This here is an equation with two variables I can't solve unless I have two equations. If you forgot uh, a little bit of algebra, go back to the algebra chapter, watch that video and take some notes. All right, so now let's solve for x, meaning getting x all by itself. First thing I'm gonna do is add 2x to both sides, add seven to both sides, over here, I have 3x plus 2x, which is 5x. Negative 7 plus 7, they cancel each other out. Negative 2x plus 2x, they cancel each other out. 8 plus 7 is 15. Now I have 5x equals 15. I haven't got x by itself, but I'm getting closer. Getting x by itself is being multiplied by 5. I reverse that by dividing by 5. These cancel. If I do that to the left, I do it to the right side as well. So x is equal to 15 divided by 5, or 3. So this x value right here is going to be 3. Now that I have that x value of 3, I could take it and plug it into either equation. It doesn't matter which one. I'm just going to plug it in here. It's going to be a substitution. I know x is equal to 3. I plug it in just like I took that and replaced that. That's a substitution. So y, ooh, kind of out of room here y is equal to negative 2 times x, which is 3, plus 8. So I have y is equal to negative 2 times 3, negative 6, plus 8. y is equal to negative 6 plus 8, or 2. So 
I got value for x, value for y. What I'm saying here is this point of intersection is over 3, and my y value is 2. So this ordered pair, my solution, is 3, 2. I could do that. I've done it two ways. So far, I graphed it, but it was kind of a sloppy graph, so I couldn't quite figure it out. And then I did it with substitution, taking that value of y, plugging it in for y, solving for x, taking that value of x, plugging it in here, and getting a value for y. That's an ordered pair. That's my answer, 3, 2. Let me clean up this board, and we'll do it a third way with linear combinations. All right, so remember we got our ordered pair. We got our solution, 3, 2. I'm going to do it a third way called linear combinations. One way is not always better than another. There's just three ways to do it. Some instances, you could do it easily with graph, uh, especially if the answer is an integer. If it doesn't cross at a point, you know, a perfect place, and you might want to do linear combinations or substitution. With this one right here, substitution is probably the easiest and the most exact, but I'm going to do it with linear combinations as well. What linear combinations means is I am taking these two equations with two variables, and I'm going to add them together, add all the values together to see if I can get rid of one of the variables. It's going to work pretty well here because I have one y. If I wanted to get rid of the x's, I would have to multiply this by a 2 to get a 6x, multiply this by a 3 to get a negative 6x, add them together, and the x's will drop out. So again, I'm going to do linear combinations. All I did was rewrite this equation in the red box right here, the equation in the blue box right here, and I'm going to subtract one equation from the other equation. So what I'm really doing is I'm multiplying this by a negative, I could do whatever I want on the left as long as I do it to the right. So I'm going to multiply the right side by a negative 1. That's going to give me y plus negative y, which is 0. Negative times a negative is a positive. Don't forget i got to distribute that negative through the whole quantity. So that becomes positive 2x and negative 8. 3x and 2x is 5x. Negative 7 and negative 8 is negative 15. Still solving for x, I'm going to add 15 to both sides. I'm going to add these things on the left. 0 and 15 is 15. I have 5x. Negative 15 and 15 is 0. I have 5x is equal to 15. Divide both sides by 5. x is equal to 3. Remember, that's what we got when we did it with substitution. Now that I have that value of x, through my linear combinations, I take that value of x, I plug it into either equation. In this case, I'm going to plug it into the first one, because I, just to show you how it'll work, that'll work in either one. I take that x and I plug it in there, and then my y is equal to 3 times x. Well, I know x is 3, so I plug it in there, minus 7. So y is equal to 9 minus 7 where y is equal to 2. I have a value for x, a value for y. x always goes first. My value of x is 3. My value of y is 2. And my ordered pair through linear combinations is the same solution, 3, 2, the same as my graph. Actually, before we do this next problem, the link to all previous chapters are in the description. Maybe go through that and watch previous videos if some of this isn't making sense. This is a Foundations in Math course prepping you uh, for any standardized math test. Go ahead and pause the video right here. If you would, do the problem in the notebook you have in front of you. You want to solve this three separate ways. First, obviously, is going to be the easiest. is going to be linear combinations. Make sure you know how to do it with linear combinations, adding the equations together. Then do it with substitution. That's going to take a fair bit of algebra. And then do it with graphing. And that's also going to be a little bit tricky because you've got to put in y equals mx plus b form. So there's going to be some algebra manipulating that. So again, pause the video. Solve this problem right here all three ways. Unpause the video and watch how I do it. And we'll see if we're getting this. All right, so step one is linear combinations. I don't have to multiply it by anything. I could just add straight down and my y's will drop out. So x plus x is 2x. y plus negative y is 0. That drops out. 8 plus 4 is 12. Divide both sides by 2 to get x by itself. 
x is equal to 6. I take that value of x, and I plug it into either equation. In this case, I'll just plug it in right there, and it gives me x, which is 6, plus y is equal to 8. Solving for y, I subtract 6 from both sides, and I get y is equal to 8 minus 6, or 2. Again, that is an ordered pair. It is an x value 6 and a y value 2. If the directions for the problem said solve for the point of intersection in these two lines, you would be done. That's it. The ordered pair, the solution where these lines cross is 6, 2. Just to make sure graphing is making a lot of sense for you here, I'm going to do it graphically as well. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take this red equation right here, x plus y equals 8, and I'm going to put in y equals mx plus b form so that I could graph it. So I'm going to subtract x from both sides. That gives me y by itself. These are dissimilar terms, so i got to keep them separate. So I have negative x plus 8. That is the same thing as y equals mx plus b. So when I go to graph that, I have a y-intercept of 8 up here. From that point of 8 on my y-axis, slope is negative 1 over 1. I rise down because it's negative, so I go down 1 over 1, down 1 over 1, and that's my red line right there. To graph this line right here, I'm starting with x minus y equals 4. I want it to look like y equals mx plus b. I subtract x from both sides. That gives me negative y is equal to negative x plus 4. Got to get y by itself, so I divide both sides by a negative 1. Divide everything on the left by negative 1 to get y by itself. Everything on the right divided by a negative 1. Negative divided by a negative is positive, so that's x. 4 divided by negative 1 is negative 4. So I have it in the form y equals mx plus b. I'm going to graph that with a y-intercept of 4. So I'm going to come down about here to negative 4. From negative 4, I rise 1, run 1, rise 1, run 1. It's going to cross like that. If I drew it a lot better, if I drew it on graph paper and a ruler, uh, I'd be able to see that this was 6 over and 2 up. And again, that's my ordered pair. So on this problem, first step was graphing with linear combinations to get the ordered pair 6, 2. Second step was to do it graphically over 6, up 2. I can see it's the same thing. I'm going to clean this screen up, and then we'll do it the third way with substitution. It's going to take a little bit of algebra to do that. All right, solve this problem with substitution. I need to get one of those variables by itself. I could pick either equation, red or blue. I'm going to pick the red one. I have x plus y equals 8. What I want to do is get one variable by itself. It doesn't really matter which one. I think I'll get x by itself. I'm going to subtract y from both sides. That's going to give me x by itself. It'll be equal to 8 minus y. I could have done it like I did in the previous part where I had it y equals mx plus b. I could have just taken that mx plus b and plugged it in for y. Just showing you another way to do it. A lot of ways to do this. This is just one. I, one's not better than the other, just a lot of different ways, as long as you follow all the rules of algebra and mathematics. So now I have this value of x. x is equal to 8 minus y. I take that value of x and I plug it in for x right there. Has to be in the other equation. So this x is replaced with 8 minus y. It is minus y equals 4. So I substituted in the value of x into the place of x, and it gave me this equation. Nice thing about this is now i got one equation, one variable. I have 8 minus y minus y minus 2y is equal to 4. Solving to get y by itself, I'm going to subtract 8 from both sides. That's going to give me negative 2y, 4, and negative 8 is negative 4. Solving for y, divide both sides by negative 2. Y is by itself now, that's what we wanted. Negative divided by negatives, a positive. 4 divided by 2 is 2, or negative 4 divided by negative 2 is positive 2. That is my y value. Now that I have that y value, I could plug it into either equation. I'll plug it into this one, say, right here. So I have x 
minus y, y is 2, is equal to 4. I'm going to add 2 to both sides to get x by itself. x, those cancel, is equal to 6. Got a value for x, value for y, that is an ordered pair. x always comes first, 6, y next, 2. And I can see that is the same solution I got both graphically and with substitution. All right, if you're new to the channel, think about subscribing. If you have any questions at all, please post them in the comments. I'll get back to you as soon as possible. If you want to support the channel, you could always buy a cool t-shirt in the merch. I think I have it in the description. I don't know. Okay, um, there it is. Solving systems of equations. You know, you could spend a lot of time on this. Again, this is just a quick overview, hopefully refreshing some of those ideas, uh, bringing back some of those memories so you could do well on any standardized math test. Thank you for watching.